In this video, we're going to be showing cross-browser automated testing using Playwright Sharp. There are five great features we're going to talk about. We're going to look at some of the documentation and then look at some of the examples in code. The first feature I want to talk about that is really amazing that Playwright Sharp, and I think all Playwright has, is the auto wait. Any actions that you have to do or are waiting for any element on the page, like a click, a fill, checking for text, all of those things get handled for you by Playwright. Unlike Selenium, where you always have to do like a wait for, here they're going to say, um, if you're looking for an element on the DOM, it's going to automatically wait for it to be there, be visible, stop moving around or not be animated. It can also scroll that into view for you so you don't have to add that code. And it can also wait for other things to stop interacting with it and, it, and automatically retry if that element gets detached for any reason. So that's the first really great feature of Playwright. So even if even if you've used other things before, like Puppeteer or Selenium, I think this feature alone is a good enough reason to start looking at Playwright instead of those other ones, because writing all those frameworks and stuff is kind of a hassle. So the second great feature of Playwright is that it drives Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit. Selenium really is uh, driving the browser as a user would, but it's kind of doing that from the outside. I would say Playwright is more doing it as a part of the browser. So they, they've actually worked with the browsers and put code in there so that this tool is able to kind of work it the other way around. And so it can tell the browser to open up tabs. It can do other things, but everything works across all the Chromium, Firefox, and WebKit browsers. If you are using IE, you're kind of out of luck here, but um, so you would have to use something like Selenium. The browsers, um, the cross browsers is a great feature. So the third feature uh, going along with the second feature of browsers is the browser context. What's cool about the browser context is the incognito light session. You get a clean session every time because this browser context is much lighter. You can keep your browser, um, you can keep one for all your tests and then just keep opening new contexts as you need them. Think of a context more like a page. So, um, and then you can kind of control if you want to do multi-page things, open up multiple pages, uh, navigate places and close them when you need to. Uh, the other thing you can do with these, I'm not going to show it, is uh, you can open up context it, with geolocation or different Android settings. But the other thing you can do with them is actually keep your security settings between. So instead of, instead of having to log in for every test, you can use the previous context login if it was a cookie or something and just keep passing that cookie on to the next context. So I'm not going to be showing any of those examples, but they're in the documentation if you want to take a look. So the fourth super awesome feature is built in for you is the ability to handle in, a, in an accept. So they're mocking their API endpoint. I'm going to show, I'm going to show something a little bit different in my examples. You can do some cool things with this network interception. So the last thing that I think is a really cool feature of Playwright. In Playwright, you can use CSS selectors, XPath selectors, HTML attributes, and even look for things like the text content or mix CSS and XPath selectors together. It's smart enough where if you just throw a CSS selector in there, it'll find it. If you use an XPath, it'll find it. You can specifically tell it what it's what you're looking for, but you don't have to. So here we are looking at the code of uh, basically this is just the XUnit template. Um, and all I did was go out to NuGet and add the Playwright Sharp in. Um, you can see I'm at 0142. Hopefully you're at a newer version. This this really has everything that we need. I think they're going to be going to 10 soon. At least uh, that was what they said in their updates, I think, last month. The, hopefully the API is all similar to what you're seeing here. If not, I might have to update this video later. One of the things you have to do, especially in the examples, is you have to do a wait Playwright install async. And what this is actually doing is that is installing all those browsers for you. So that's installing WebKit, Chrome, and Firefox um, kind of at their edge versions so that the tests can always be up to date. So that way you don't have to keep going in. I know with like Selenium Sharp, you have to constantly go in and update your NuGet package as the browser updates because they're not tied together. Uh, with Playwright, you have this advantage where you can just run this install async and you don't really care. This install async doesn't have to run for every single test but it has to run once before all your tests start. So there's some other ways to handle that that we'll get to later. Um, then we have this uh, play right here, which basically creates a, 
class for that's going to call some of your other code. On this line, we're going to create a WebKit browser and we're going to launch this and then we're going to tell this it's headless is false. If we go and run this really quick here, we're just going to run this test once by itself. And you'll see that with headless false, we'll be able to see that a WebKit browser is created and then it's going to go to the Stack Overflow web page. It's doing the install first. It takes a long time the first time you run the test. It doesn't take that long every time. So here's the WebKit browser. Um, you can see it on the title bar if you um, paused it. But uh, if I come back here and go to Chromium, I can rerun that test. It should be much quicker because the install won't take so long. So here's the Chromium browser. It goes to Stack Overflow and the test ends. So, so we kind of get that all those browsers built in for us. Um, but generally you're not going to do this. You're not going to have all of this code in every single test because it would be the same code in every single test. We're going to fix that here. Uh, so I'm just going to comment this out. So to use some XUnit features, um, with XUnit, every time that you actually run a test, it runs the constructor for you. So we were kind of doubling up code here because I had all this code still in. So um, you can ignore the times that we saw earlier. But what we're what we're going to do is on the first test that runs, if the browser doesn't exist, we're going to create one. And so we're going to first install Playwright, because since we don't know if it is up to date or not, then we're going to create a Playwright instance, and then we're just going to return a browser that we can use. And here we have headless as false, so you can see what's going on. I'm just going to I'm just going to go like this for now, comment that out so that when we show some of the examples here, we'll just let it run and it'll be headless. By default, it's headless anyway, because who wants to watch the browser when you're doing your automated tests, especially when you have hundreds of them? It doesn't make any sense. We're going to just store a page and then the dispose method is going to be called and we're just going to make sure that the page gets closed. So here, if we look at some of our tests that we're going to be going through, if we want to validate the title, um, we're going to take that browser and we're going to use that uh, one of those features that we were talking about earlier. I, I believe it was the third feature of the new context, which is the light context. It's not the heavy browser object. So we're going to create a new clean context, then add a new page, go to our website, check for, uh, check for a link here that says for developers, and then check to see what the text is of that link. And it should say for developers. So if we run this really quick, and actually I'm going to run both of these. Um, or let's just go ahead and run all of these since we're doing it headlessly, just to prove that they all work here. So this one failed, but we'll come up a second. You can see here it's actually saying that we need to do human verification. But um, here you can see that um, our other two work here. So. Um, the, val the validate worked. We were able to get this for developers, uh, trim it, and then assert that the link text was actually equal. And we could get that text by doing page.get text content async. So here, um, this one's the one that blew up. I'm going to wait on this one for just a second and come down here and show you this other one. So here we have uh, stop images down or stop image downloads. And this is doing that network interception I was talking about. And what we're going to do is say, we're going to catch every request and check if that request is a resource of image. And if it's an image, we're just going to abort that one because we don't want to pull down images during our tests. Um, and that's just to speed things up. So what we're going to do here is I just have this extra headline here just to make it stop and you can um, tell that the test is running. But what we can do if we debug this is let me stop it or so let me debug it here and we'll pull up the page and see what it looks like. Before we run this test, we have to go back here and turn headless on. So I'm gonna run the stop images. And I didn't mean to run it, I meant to debug it. We'll try that again. And when the page comes up, we can see that this is just yellow up here just so we have something to compare it to. And I'm just gonna close out the window. Our test will probably fail, but that's okay. So here, I'm just gonna comment out this code really quick and then rerun this, rerun this test. 
So now, instead of just aborting all those images, it'll just continue, um, continue those requests. So if we compare these two, you can see that this one loaded without the SVGs, and this one has a whole load of SVGs that have been loaded in the background. So we do have control over those uh, requests. We can stop ones that really have no um, meaning for our tests that just would kind of slow things down, especially if you're making requests for tons of images. Um, you can just block those, especially high res images, and just not slow down your tests that way. So I think that's a really cool feature. The other test we had, the, this stop search, um, this one's kind of interesting because um, it actually works just fine. The problem is, is Stack Overflow is actually blocking us because it thinks we're doing automated regression, um, which we kind of are. So um, if we come here, if I search, it says um, it wants me to make sure I'm not a robot. So we'll get past that really quick. So now if I come back here and run this test, it'll actually work for me. The test worked. We were able to get the C sharp search working. And what that test is just doing is just going to the page. It's going to do an input. Um, it found the input name of Q, which is what they called that input at the top. I typed uh, C sharp in there. I then clicked on the search bar and then pressed the special key of enter. And then I grabbed the headline text, which is FS dash headline one. And there's probably a better selector on the page. I just grabbed the first one I found. And then uh, I just made sure that the questions tag and then in brackets C sharp. So all of that, all of that worked. It worked pretty smoothly. Um, running these tests was not very hard. And you can see here, um, I have more, I probably have more code and comments in between about where I found these things. I will include those comments in the descriptions so that you guys can uh, take a look at those things. Also some of the ones I showed on the slides earlier. I really do think Playwright is a very good framework. I think it, I think it could definitely overtake Selenium in the future. I know Selenium is really big but a lot of that's for legacy reasons. At some point, Internet Explorer is not going to be used by all the companies, but um, until then, we still do need to use it. But if you're using something that needs to do mobile browser mocking and stuff like that, I, I think Playwright's a good place to go. The other thing I'll say is that it's fantastic to see all that auto wait happening. You can see I, we've got really clean tests. We don't have to do all the waiting. We don't have to do um, a whole bunch of I would say difficult work of saying I have to be really finicky about how I write my tests. All I'd have to do is tell the page really what I wanted to do. Playwright handles that for me. So it's really great. As far as the Playwright Sharp repo goes, uh, very faithful to the JavaScript bindings, which is really good because that lets you use the JavaScript documentation. The JavaScript documentation is really good. Um, that's It's really complete. Um, the C Sharp repo right now doesn't have very many examples but they faithfully implemented all the javascript for you so anything that works in the javascript repo basically works in c sharp as long as you have your syntax right there are a couple of weird tricky things especially when it comes to like mocking where there were some slight differences but that was all language differences between um, javascript and c sharp it wasn't anything really bizarre you just have to know, hey, I actually do need to use en enumerations um, rather than using these as like actual numbers or something like that. So it's not that big of a deal. It's it's pretty smooth, but um, I'm sure in the future they'll have a couple more examples out here in these repos for us. Definitely take a look at Playwright Sharp. And uh, if you were getting value out of this video, please hit the like button and I'll see you in the next video.